he wants to work for Bethesda, but he's going to separately, uh, uh, we'll see, you know, it's all just speculation of what we can do, but that's the plans, and we're already working on a game, ah! I've been working on a game since last year, actually, at least on paper, and he's been learning the programming knowledge, so I'm pretty much the story writer, and he's the programmer. But uh, that doesn't mean that Matt doesn't have any say in the story, it's just we don't really know where the story's completely going yet until we understand what kind of gaming parameters we have to work with with the software we're going to be programming our game with, which probably might start out in Java. Sim simply because it's a language that's easy to... Un not e well, it's easy to understand when you put the time into learning it, I'll say that. Because anything can be simple if you put the time and effort into it. But uh, it's a matter of what we can do in the game before we can get too crazy with the story. So a lot of what I'm doing is extracting nutso ideas, vague concepts that I have in my head that I'd like to see come to fruition. And we'll see what happens Another ganga! in the future when we actually get to the programming stage of it all. Yeah. Man, that is three Gengars in one freaking level. I love this. Licky Licky, you are pwning them. I do not know what special effect is on you, but you are like my Licky Licky Luck Charm. Nabbing me all the trophies. And see, this is something, another thing also going back, because we always do. I mean, it's a constant thing on my mind, uh, the status of Pokemon Rumble for the 3DS. Because I love my 3DS, and I love seeing new innovative titles for it. But, uh, I would love to see, and I mentioned this, I think I might have mentioned that in one of these videos, actually, that when the next Smash Bros. comes out, that it should allow you to present your trophy collection on your real-world items via an augmented reality stamp. And since it's going to be a cartridge-based game, it could include a card within the instruction manual in that little slot holder. And it could be all the Pokemon trophies that you collected, or it could just be the Pokemon toys, and they would be lifelike on your dresser, moving around, or wherever you decide to place them. Oh, this coffee is putridly delicious. Putrid in the, uh, in element of needing this much caffeine, it's, it's despicable, I really should get some sleep, eventually. But, uh, not on a roll that I am now of losing. Definitely not a Kaiser roll, because Kaiser rolls are delicious, and this defeat is disgusting. Hello everybody, welcome to Pokemon Rumble Let's Play. We're in the super rank of the advanced region of this rumbling game. It's the second mode after defeating the main story, if you could call it a story, of the game. It's the same spammy goodness that we've come to know and love over these past however many episodes it has been. And uh, this is still the same recording, so I am loving the fact that we are going to get this game done in hopefully an hour. Because the last level approximately took me an hour. I've got about a three hour window, uh, yeah, about a three hour window before I have to go to Six Flags. Or, not have to, but desire to go to Six Flags when it opens up. Because it's going to be a scorcher today. I've got season passes, and I'm going to Hurricane Harbor. It's one of the few benefits of being a Jersey resident that I fully take advantage of. I know I've got some Jersey listeners, too. Jersey viewers, so shout out to them guys. What's up? Living in your state? I may just be around the corner from you, and you never know. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, man, that would be actually really cool, though, if I think about it. If I had a chance to meet the viewers. I think about that in near the future when I actually have viewers in a lot of other places that I could go visit. Because right now, 3,000 viewers around the world is not a big number, so I would probably not have anyone show up if I was to do a meet-and-greet sort of thing. But it would be cool for people at... Uh, in Jersey, maybe we met up at Six Flags one day. That would be 
freaking sweet. There was something I realized in the last video that I started to say that I didn't complete my thought on, and I do apologize, but it's been a long night that I haven't slept on. Uh, this is the recording after the live cast. I just directly went from that to college homework, to New Vegas, to wake, or not waking up, but looking outside and saying, huh, it's daytime now, isn't it? Wow, I should probably do another Excel assignment, which I did, and uh, do some recording, which I'm doing now. So I do apologize for forgetting my stories, but I mentioned MSM, a vitamin that I take, and uh, that's supposed to help with joints and muscle pains. But if I just had some medical marijuana, these pains would not be a problem. I believe that with the amino acids we're missing from the hemp seed, we're missing a vital part of our diet. It's kind of like having a lack of vitamin C, except it's a literal vitamin C, vitamin cannabis. But with all the nutrients found in the hemp seed, I really feel like our nutrition systems are being robbed and that it should be incorporated in our diets. And especially when you look at the injustices and the lack of food, the lies of food that live on most of the shelves of today's supermarkets. I can't tell you, I, well yeah I can, uh, I, in fact if I couldn't I'd be such a bad spokesperson for learning new ways, but it took about a year it's been taking about a year for me and my family to reassess our whole dietary plan. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely, my family, my uh, brother and father at least, are not as strict as I am about diet. Um, just because, well, they just don't care as much. But I take offense and uh, become enraged when finding out truths about uh, the food system. And many of them are how unhealthy the foods are for you. And one of the things that I learned was how sugar, sugars are processed in the body and why there is such an alarming rate of obesity right now. It's not because we're stuffing our faces or anything of that nature. And it's not because there are more people around, so obviously there's gonna be more obesity rates. That's nothing like the corn companies and sugar companies, high fructose corn syrup companies, for that matter, would like to suggest. But it's that sugars are processed only by our liver. Our liver, if you don't know our biology, is basically our toxic waste dump, and it's our out system. If you ever hear about someone intoxicating their liver because they've had too much to drink, it's because they've overload their, overloaded their body with toxins. So what that means, since sugar is processed like a toxin, is that giving, giving your child a ounce, or not an ounce, but one of those uh, grace, uh, grape juice or any juice in that matter that has artificial sweeteners, any sweetener, glucose. Um, glucose is the natural sugar that we process that's in fruits. But the thing that makes that doable is that there's fiber. What you'll see in many of the juices of today, most of them out there, is that it has no dietary fiber, therefore can't be transported out of your body properly and sits in your liver. And the problem is, this stuff is in everything. I mean, go ahead and next time you're shopping, if you're willing to be disappointed and give up a few of the foods that you think you come to know and love, uh, check the ingredients list and be shocked and amazed at how much this stuff is thrown into it. And this is not only a partial uh, fault of the government subsidizing industries like corn and having that thrown at everything edible, but it's also the sickness I believe at least, and you're free to believe what you want, but this is what I'm extrapolating just from, holy crap, psycho cut, extrapolating just from seeing how our government works in their lying lack of protection, claiming to be there for us, methods, holy crap, it always keeps almost getting me, but in their lying methods of uh, trying to protect us. Um, what I 
come base it down to is the medical industry. And yes, I say industry because it damn well is an industry. Cancer is a business. I believe that there's already a cure out there for cancer. It involves cannabis. I've seen, but I've seen the um, preliminary the prim preliminary possibilities through a guy named Rick Simpson, and I'll link to his video below. Uh, all right, um, but Rick Simpson processed hemp oil with some other compounds and applied it in Canada to some of his own friends that he knew who were suffering from cancer and it had amazing effects but it had some profound effects and I know that the medical industry will never find a cure for cancer because they make too much money off of it um, of course you're never going to get any actual studies done on cannabis because they don't want to find a cure. They don't want the cure-all because that will take way too much money away from the medical system. How are they going to make money if they actually cure people? It's not a good method for their business scheme. It just wouldn't work. So to keep the populace unhealthy by poisoning the food system, and like I said, there are options out there. It's not as though that uh, there is nothing else out there. It's becoming slim. It's very difficult. It's a lot harder to eat naturally and uh, monitor everything that you eat that goes into your body and consider the long term down the line where this came from effect of buying that food. But really, it's speaking with your dollar that has the greatest effect on these companies. You don't buy their genetically morphed foods that withstand Roundup and create a monoculture, which uh, I'll discuss next. If you don't support them, then their business model will fade. But you have to be doing a lot of research oftentimes on truly organic farms because sometimes you'll find places that state they're organic, state they're, they're green, friendly, and clean, and really they're just serving you a lot. Like I said, it's been taking me and my family roughly a year to reassess our diet. And it's gone as far as not eating gluten because it has some negative effects on your insides. It can be processed and it's not as bad as sugar and that it goes directly to your liver, but I guess it is kind of sort of equally bad in the sense that it works like sandpaper on your intestines and whittles down your, um, I don't know what the actual technical biological term is, but it whittles down the organ making it capable your, inside your intestines, that function, to extract nutrients from your food. So it grinds down your insides, and uh, for me that's not really a pleasant, uh, pleasant thing to be having going on inside my body. I think that really, oh, damn it decomposes <laughs> that was funny I did not mean to press that by the way but I think that really speeds up the decomposition process of us humans and it's easily preventable and uh, again it's a matter of choice I don't never eat gluten but often I try not to most of the time I don't eat gluten it will be only on certain situations when I'm out with uh, friends or family and uh, I already have kind of a hard time being a vegetarian, finding something to get on the menu. Uh, a lot of times I'll walk into a place and I have to get some kind of modified dish because there just are no vegetarian choices. Even the salads will be stuck packed with meat. But that's fine, you know, again, it's my personal choice. But going back to what I was saying about monocultures, um, when Monsanto produces these seeds that are custom patented, they're, custom, they're uh, patenting life, suing farmers or having it on their farms because they contaminated their farms through cross-breeding in the air. I don't understand why people can't file a cross-suit against Monsanto stating, well, you invaded my land with your crops through the wind, you should have had that within um, contained lands. You essentially just raped my land. You raped your land, my land, with your seed. 
and in result, now you destroyed my entire legacy of crop, which took a family's history to raise on a farm, because many of the farms here